Python is everywhere, whether you want to go into machine learning, data science, or web development. It's one of the most popular programming languages requested by most companies. With so many online resources available, though, getting started can feel overwhelming. Where do you even start, right? And that is why I created a full 12-page roadmap based on Google's Python class as a foundation. If you're only looking for the roadmap, you can go ahead and download it for free on my website. But if you want tips and insights on how to navigate this document effectively, be sure to watch this full video. Before diving into the full roadmap though, let's first talk about your goals. Python is super powerful and versatile, but this also means that there are so many things that you can learn. Knowing what you want to do with it will save you time and help you focus your attention on mastering Python. So let's talk about six of the most popular roles where Python is one of the key languages. First one is software developer. You can work on a wide range of tasks like product architecture, building or coding or writing tests and maintaining software applications or systems to solve various problems. If it sounds a little generic, it is because software engineers can really work on so many different things. So if you are interested in becoming a software developer, you want to focus on Python's core libraries and fundamental programming concepts like object-oriented program. When we analyzed 150 job postings on LinkedIn, we saw that Python is the most asked language in job descriptions with 67% of companies asking for Python. For backend roles, 82% of companies ask for Python, making it the most popular language for backend engineering as well. Now, once you learn Python, many people debate whether to learn Django or Flask. And we saw that Django was listed way more often than Flask. So that's what I would recommend learning next. If data science or data engineering is your target role, 100% of companies listed Python in the job descriptions and libraries like NumPy or Pandas will be your best friends. Python is also the most popular language for machine learning and AI engineering roles. And you will want to learn libraries like PyTorch, TensorFlow, Scikit-Learn, and Keras. But before you jump into any of these libraries, you want to first build the core foundation. And one of the best resources to start learning Python is Google's Python class. It's a free course originally designed for Google engineers, but anyone can really access it. I like it because it's packed with written guides, video lessons, along with four practice exercises to get you started. Now, if you're new here, I'm Jean, and I used to be a software engineer and an engineering manager at WhatsApp slash Meta. At most big tech companies like these, internal training programs are often used to help engineers learn new skills. And the Google course covers the basics of Python, starting with simple concepts, moving into more advanced topics, all just in a couple of days. And this is how most tech trainings are designed because they want their employees to get up to speed as quickly as possible. But since you're learning it on your own, you don't have to rush through it. Take your time and focus on building a strong foundation. Now, before we jump into coding, let's talk about setting up your environment. Python setup guide is included in the Google's class. It will walk you through installing Python on your computer and configuring your text editor. The course doesn't go into too much detail about the editor itself, likely because Google assumes you're already familiar with their recommended IDEs, or they probably also offer another course on that. But if you're new to programming, there are many options that you can explore, including Jupyter Notebook, PyCharm, VS Code, Atom, Eclipse, PyDev, or my personal favorite, Vim. I prefer Vim because it's versatile and can be used with almost any programming language. And having used Vim for over 20 years, I've never really felt the need to switch to another IDE, but this is a personal choice. So I recommend exploring different editors to find the one that works best for you. One tip I do think is really important is that when you're setting up your editor, make sure to choose either tabs or spaces for your indentation. This part about the editor setting is surprisingly important. If you're new to coding, you might not know the whole famous tabs versus spaces debate among software engineers. Google's recommendation is to use spaces, and I'm not gonna dive into the whole debacle about which one's better, but trust me, people have very strong opinions on this. So whatever you end up choosing, be consistent and set up your editor to use either tabs or spaces intentionally. Also not included in the Google class is the PEP8 style guide for Python code. I've added this to the roadmap as an optional topic you can explore. 
The document outlines coding conventions for Python's standard library, like how do you use blank lines, block comments, and naming conventions, which I think is super important. So if you're new, make sure you get familiar with this as you start out, because it's helpful to build good habits from the beginning. Okay, now let's really dive into Python. On day one, you'll get an introduction to the core concepts. You'll learn everything about importing libraries, command line arguments, defining functions, and working with variables, all foundational to your coding experience. Functions are also essential. They allow you to organize your code into reusable blocks. In variables, they store your data. These are pretty typical for most common programming languages. But one thing special about Python is that Python is case sensitive, meaning that uppercase and lowercase letters are treated as distinct variables. So if you have a variable named Python with a capital P versus Python with a lowercase p, they are considered different variables. Next module, you work with strings and lists. Strings are immutable, meaning once they're created, you can't change them. Lists, on the other hand, are ordered and mutable, so you can modify them as needed. Python also makes it really easy to manipulate strings with indexing, slicing, and lots of formatting options, so look into that. Lastly, Python's if statement allows you to check conditions, and they use indentation instead of parentheses to define code blocks. Now, module three on lists are a key part of Python. They're created with square brackets, and they're ordered and mutable, which means you can change them after they're created while keeping the order intact. Loops are essential for working with lists. A for loop lets you go through each item in a list. A while loop runs as long as a condition is true. And these are also pretty typical for most programming languages. Module three covers all the basic fundamental concepts that you want to understand before going to the advanced topics for day two. Things get a little bit more advanced. You'll learn about sorting data, working with tuples, dictionaries, files, and even diving into regex. So day two, module one is on sorting. This helps you organize data. And Python makes it easy to do it with functions like sorted or sort. Tuples are similar to lists, but immutable, which makes them perfect for storing fixed data. And Python dictionaries are key for fast lookups, counting occurrences, or storing mappings. And they're commonly used in Likode problems due to their efficiency and versatility. So make sure you master this section as well. Python file handling allows you to create, read, write, and manipulate files efficiently using built-in functions and libraries like open, making it essential for tasks such as data storage and data processing. And you'll probably be using this for most complex solutions. Next is regular expressions. Python's regex module is a powerful tool for finding patterns in text. With things like search, you can quickly check if a specific pattern exists in a string. For example, if you want to validate an email address, which is a very common use case, rather than manually checking for the email formatting, you can use a regular expression to automatically match the common structure of an email. I've personally used regex often while working at WhatsApp, and it's incredibly helpful for automating a lot of the checks like this, hand matching from simple text searches to complex validations. To explore the full potential of regex, check out the options and functionality available in the regex module. Utilities provide the tools to streamline common tasks like file management, running external commands, and handling web data. By using these built-in modules, you can save time, reduce code complexity, and focus on the core of your project. Python provides lots of modules like OS, Shuto, Subprocess, and etc. to manage files, to run commands, handle errors, and work with web data more efficiently. If you need help with additional topics like Linux command line or object-oriented programming or data structures and algorithm, I've included more resources in the roadmap that you can check out on your own. And once you've covered all the foundational basics, it's time to apply what you have learned. And the best way really to do this is with capstone projects. Google has four project recommendations, the basic Python exercise, baby names, copy special, 
and log puzzle. I've also listed tips for the project in the full roadmap document for you to check out. Now, if you have time, you will probably want to do all of the projects before moving on to coming up with your own projects because working on someone else's exercise is a good way to first dip your toes into working on projects, but really coming up with your own problems and solutions for the problems is really the best way to learn and become a real software engineer. Unfortunately, though, mastering Python is just the beginning. It's not really enough on its own to land a job in tech. Now, if you want to learn more about the final step to securing your tech job, you want to watch this video. Otherwise, YouTube thinks you should watch this one next, so I'll see you there.